Hello, and welcome to PowerStore Initial Configuration video. In this video, we will be talking about the initial configuration of a PowerStore system. We will cover a few topics in this video. We'll start off with an overview about the initial configuration process. Then, we'll look at the requirements for both PowerStore T and PowerStore X models, and end with a demo. What is the initial configuration in PowerStore? Initial configuration takes the PowerStore system or systems from a factory state to an operational state specific to the customer's environment. It's the first step that the user needs to do once their network configuration is complete to bring the system online. A dedicated initial configuration wizard walks the user through this configuration process. This initial configuration will let the user configure their cluster. Depending on the type of the cluster the user wants to deploy, the user needs to have some information handy. When going through the initial configuration of PowerStore T, which we will show shortly in the demo, the user can pick which storage configuration they prefer. The user can select either Unified, which provides the traditional SAN and NAS, or Block Optimize, which only runs SAN. A note here, before you start your PowerStore X configuration, make sure you have the vCenter information in a prior. Make sure you created a standalone vCenter in a prior with a version 6.7. This table shows the requirements that an administrator needs in order to configure each type of the power store. Please take some time to review these requirements. Let's now take a look at the demo in how an administrator can configure power store T and power store X. After discovering the system, the user gets to log in to the first time. The default username is admin and the password is password with capital P123 hash and click login. Before you start the initial configuration, a change password is required. Input the default password and the new password. Service password can also be changed if needed. Click Update to start the initial configuration. The initial configuration starts with the end user license agreement. Make sure you read the license agreement and then check the box I accept this agreement, then click Accept. In the Cluster Details section, the user has to give a name to the cluster and select the storage configuration. In this example, they will select Unified. There are additional appliances that can be added into the cluster. Note, this option is only available in PowerStore T. Click Next to continue. In the network part, there are two parts needs to be filled in the PowerStore T. Click Configure now. First part is the management network. The VLAN is zero by default, which will keep. Fill out the netmask, gateway, cluster IP, and provide minimal three IPs. These three IPs are reserved for the appliance and the two nodes of the appliance. In the storage network, the user has two options, either to configure the iSCSI network now or configure later. The configure later option is made for the fiber channel users or users who don't have multiple IPs in front. In this example, we will choose the configure now. Click next once everything looks good. For PowerStore X, an additional IPs need to be added, which is for the vMotion IPs. Here is an example how the network section looks like in PowerStore X. In the Infrastructure Services section, one DNS and one NTP are required. The physical switches is optional. This section made for the record. In this example, we will skip this part and I click Next. PowerStore X 
has an additional section after the infrastructure services, which is the hypervisor information. Here's an example of this page how it looks like. Make sure you have the credentials of the vCenter. There are a few things to note in the cluster configuration section. This page provides copy link to access the graphical user interface once the cluster is configured. Also, there is view full details link. This provides all the information the user provided during the initial configuration. It's highly recommended to go through this list and make sure everything looks correct. Also, there is export configuration details link that can be saved for the record. It's a JSON file format. At this point, you click validate. Validate makes sure that the IPs you provided, like a DNS and NTP IPs, are actually valid. Once the validation is valid and there are no critical alerts, you can click configure. Once you clicked configure, a bar is displayed to show the percentage of the configuration. Once it's completed, it will show a green mark. In this configuration, we selected Unified. The next step after the cluster configuration is NAS installation. Click Next to proceed to the NAS installation. Once it's finished, the user can configure Support Assist. However, in this example, we will skip this part. At this point, you have successfully configured PowerStore cluster with one appliance. Thank you for watching this video. For additional resources, please check the white papers or visit the link dell.com slash PowerStoreDocs.